Hi, I'm Caleb Raymond, and if you've watched any of the other videos, you know that I've been working with Foster Church to bring you guys some Sabbath School videos. Here I am in my room quarantining because I caught the Rona. Uh, so pray for me and pray that I get better. But as I caught the Rona, I was doing some reading in Genesis, and I came across something that is throughout the whole Bible that sometimes kind of sucks to read. It's just not as fun. And that's a genealogy. Genealogies are basically just names and came after this, he came after him, he came after him, he came after him, and it's so repetitive and it takes up an entire chapter and you're like, come on, let me just get back to the story. But in this one particular genealogy, I decided to do a little bit of digging. Uh, for one reason, but then I came up with something else through my research. This is one of the first genealogies in the Bible. It's in Genesis. Genesis chapter 5, verses, thir verses 3 to 29. I have my computer down here. That's why I'm looking. <laughs> but I'll just read a quick excerpt from it, like verse 3 and 4. It says, When Seth had lived 105 years, he became father of Enosh. After he became father of Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and also had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Seth lived a total of 912 years, then he died. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he became the father of Kenan. After he became the father of Kenan, Enosh lived 815 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enosh lived a total of 905 years, and then he died, right? And then it just goes through this whole process, and it repeats, and then Enosh bore Kenan, and Kenan bore Mahalal, and Mahalal bore Jared, like, all, all of this, and it goes down until we hit Noah, right? But there's something interesting about all of these names, and a biblical scholar, not me, I did not find this, but a biblical scholar found this. And it was, if you take the Hebrew meaning for each of the names and put them in a sentence, you actually get something super interesting. If you take the na each name and translate it into English, this is what they correlate to. Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalo means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching, Methuselah means his death shall bring, Lamech means despairing, and Noah means comfort and rest. These are all the names coming from Adam to Noah. And when you put them in a sentence, adding in a couple is's and a couple the's, but no real substance to the sentence, this is a sentence you get. Man is appointed moral, mortal sorrow. But the blessed God shall come down teaching. His death shall bring the, desper the despairing comfort and rest. I find that super interesting because in a part of the Bible that I tend to skip, that we all tend to skip, there's this beautiful sentence hidden behind the names of these men that lived in the past. This beautiful sentence revealing God's power and God's plan and God's purpose. It says his, his death shall bring the despair and comfort and rest. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty desperate right now. After being diagnosed with COVID, I've had to, I've had to quarantine for, oh man, like it's been about six days now and I'm going to have to do another five, I think. But I'm getting comfort and rest from my Lord. That's the promise that is given to me through these names because his death has already happened. God knew exactly what needed to happen and he had a plan from the very beginning, the very get-go, right? So much so that he was so confident in this plan that he had humanity named after this plan to spell it out for us that if we would open our eyes, we would see. God always and forever and will always have a plan. This reminds me of a time in college when... Sorry, Danny just walked in, called me, but where was I? Oh, so I was in college, right? I still am in college, but this is a little bit before. And I had a couple plans of my own. 
I'm always talking about my plans, right? I mean, like last week I talked about how I was planning to have 2020 be my year of travel and then that got canceled, but God always has a plan, right? So this time, um, I, I liked this one girl, right? And I thought that I had the perfect plan that we were gonna date and everything was gonna be super cool, right? And then, long story short, she ends up dating this other dude, and I was like, wow, well, this, this really sucks. And I was opening up about it to one of my friends, and my friend was like, was like, Caleb, you know what you need to do right now? You need to go snowboarding. You need to go on a trip. You need to just relax, forget about women for a little bit you just need to go and and have some time with the boys i was like you know what that sounds like a perfect idea uh let's do it so we started planning out the snowboarding trip i bought a snowboard actually um and i was super stoked to go on this trip and then i mentioned it to my boss at the time and i was like yeah so i'm going on the snowboarding trip with my boy um and we're, we're gonna go shred the gnar have some fun and then she was like oh that weekend that you just said that's actually required spiritual getaway for our office. And I was like, are you joking? And I got really upset because at first I felt like God had taken away this woman that I wanted from me. And I was like, God, I, I expressed to you my, my wants. I expressed to you who I cared for. And you just kind of like threw that in the drain. And then I, w I told him, you know what, God, you know, it's whatever. I'm going to go on the snowboarding trip. I'm going to be fine. Thank you for providing for me the snowboarding trip. And then I was like, God, you just threw that away too. Because I had to go on this required retreat. And I was so upset about it, right? I tried to get out of it, but I, I couldn't. It was required. I had to be there because I, I worked in that office. And so I remember driving to the retreat and just moping just being upset just being mad at like at life at god at that girl i was just like i was just over with it and the first day i get there uh, uh the chaplain at southern she came and she split us all up into groups and she was like what we're gonna do today is we are gonna spend an hour alone with god and that kind of made me more upset because I was already mad at God. I didn't want to spend time with him. When you're mad at someone, you don't want to spend time with them. And she was like, but before we go, we're going to break up into a couple groups and we're going to talk about our in our groups what we want to happen during this hour with God. And so I sat in my group, just kind of brooding, arms, arms crossed, because I wasn't excited to go and spend an hour with a, a being I was upset with at the moment. And a couple of them said some things like, oh, I've been struggling to understand this story. So I'm hoping that I can use this story to this time to better understand this story. Some of them were like, oh, I've been looking for an answer for this prayer. So hopefully God can answer my prayer during this time. And they came to me and I was like, I'm going to be honest, guys. I am not thriving and vibing right now. I'm upset at God. I'm not having fun. I, I'm pretty mad at God right now. So I'm going to go yell at God. I'm going to go be angry at him. I'm going to process my emotion. And I said, either God is going to show me why I'm wrong or he's going to shut me up. One of the two. And so I was like, you know what? Let's go. If you want to spend an hour with me alone, God, let's go. Let, I, I have some things on my chest. I'll go get them off my chest. I don't care. Right? And so they were like, well, I hope that works out for you. And I was like, thank you. Pray for me. And so we split up into our, into our like separate, like, like we, we all went on our own. Right. And I went and found a spot that I could sit down and yell at God. Okay. I found this dock by the, by this river. It was a beautiful river, flowing river, uh, trees on either side. It was a little chilly. I had, I think actually this jacket on too. It's my favorite jacket, by the way. Yes. But I, I was sitting on that dock and I opened my mouth to get ready to just pour out my heart to God and give him my two cents and let him know why I'm upset. And then I heard something and I looked up and I saw this dog on the other side of the lake. And the dog looked at me, it was this golden retriever and I started waving its tail. And I was like, that's a cute dog. 
and then the dog walked over the the bridge that was by it came right up to me and just cuddled up right beside me and i love dogs so i started petting this dog and every time i would stop it would rub up against me more asking for more pets so i kept on petting it and then every time i would open my mouth to be mad at god to express my anger this dog would just push into me and rub me a little more and nuzzle me a little more and so i'd pet him and then i realized that god sent me this dog as an expression of his love you see even though i was upset God sent me something to love on me and say, you know what, Caleb, I get you're upset, but it's okay. I took it as God looking at me and saying, yeah, it sucks you can't go snowboarding, man. Yeah, it sucks this girl chose another guy over you. Yeah, sorry. But that's what I took him, took him as saying. He was saying, sorry, yeah. Okay. Guess what? I love you still. Guess what? I'm still not mad at you. Guess what? I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm not striking you with a lightning bolt. Instead, I'm sending a dog to cuddle up beside you in your anger to me, right? I didn't understand why God would do all these things. I still don't understand why I didn't end up with that girl. Not that I'm like upset about her or anything, but what I'm saying is God has a plan. And even when it doesn't make sense to us, even when we get upset about God having a plan, He'll send us something to remind us that he's still in control. And then, yeah, it sucks that we're upset. Yeah, it sucks that I'm not working right now. It sucks that I have to quarantine. But you know what? It's okay. Because I have a God that loves me. And I have a God who's always in control, has been in control from the beginning, and is in control now. So whenever you're upset at God's plans, or you don't understand God's plans, I pray that God sends you a dog just like he sent me.